Welcome everyone. You are here for the fourth webinar of the month on storage solutions. Today's session is called Winning Cabinetry Storage Through Best Practices. We have Christy Hudson and Sarah Reap. They're both from Masco Cabinetry and Sarah and Christy for there. We're ready to get started, ladies. Thank you. Welcome to Winning Cabinetry Storage Through Best Practices. We would like to thank Geberit for sponsoring this learning session today. Their website is noted here for you to review their products at your leisure. I'm Christy Hudson. I work for Masco Cabinetry supporting a wide range of customer needs around design, our products and selling. I travel across North America representing our brands, products, and I contribute to driving our company's partnership with top retailers. Hi, I'm Sarah Reap. I'm a CMK <laughs> and KBA and a designer relations education person from Masco Cabinetry. We make craft made Marilot and quality cabinets. My role is to work with the designers across North America to ensure they can be the best at their jobs as possible. Guiding, mentoring, and forming through the lens of kitchen and bath design, retail showroom design, and selling skills. You might have also read my articles in Kitchen and Bath Design News, where I author a column titled Inside Today's Showroom. We are both so excited to be here today with you to share our findings and our expertise for winning storage with your cabinetry sales. Christy, I agree. With our day-to-day -day work developing new products to program, we always start with the consumer <coughs> for our research and considerations. Our homeowners are the shoppers who sustain our industry. And it's an exciting time when it comes to the wide range of consumers who are, our cons or who are our customers to buy kitchens and baths. With 87 million millennials farming households to our Gen X and baby boomers combined just as large, we are setting their homes and kitchens within their homes for those busy family years where they're entertaining and memorable family time with children to their grandchildren. The kitchen continues to remain an important high value space. As kitchen and bath designers, we have a lot of opportunity and we don't want to miss the opportunity we have in making a sale that wins for us and our homeowners. So why is storage in the kitchen more important now than ever before? Sarah and I have a few theories that we put together. First, open concept thrives, a retreat from busy lives, tidiness trending, gathering at home, and social and sharing. So let's explore each of these a bit more. Open concept floor plans continue to be on remodeling consumers' wish lists. How often do your customers come to you and ask about knocking down a wall or opening up the space? I'd be willing to bet it's on a weekly, if not daily basis. But with this newfound versatility in the great room space come some challenges. Now more than ever before, that old toaster oven, a knife block, or a roll of paper towels on the countertop are visible from every angle in the home. In today's fast-paced world, our calendars book up weeks or even months in advance. Have you ever asked someone, hey, how was your day? And the reply, busy. We have dual income families, side gigs, and every imaginable activity for the kids. And all of that leaves us feeling the strain of being busy. So we need our homes to serve as a retreat where we can seek calm among the busyness of everyday life. Clutter just isn't calming. You've probably heard of the author Marie Kondo, who wrote a New York Times number one best-selling book called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. In her book, as well as her new Netflix series, she discusses her Con Marie method for tidying, which is included, includes keeping only items that spark joy and organizing those things in aesthetically pleasing ways. We have seen an increase in the using the home as a social gathering space. In a 2017 study by Growth from Knowledge of 22,000 consumers, they found that 50% of Americans entertain guests in their homes at least monthly, while 21% host daily or weekly. All of this entertaining at home makes us want to have storage solutions in place that make it easy to invite guests over 
at a moment's notice without fear that your kitchen's a mess. And lastly, we are living in a time of social media and sharing. We see all of these professionally shot, clean, beautiful homes all over House, Pinterest, and Instagram. And it builds our aspirations and our expectations for our own homes. And while you're trying to portray that idealistic version of yourself on social media, who wants a pile of papers or that mismatched crock full of cooking utensils in the background of your perfect shot. Fun fact, over 100 million photos and videos are uploaded to Instagram every day. It's estimated that 10% of all photos that were ever taken in the history of photography have been snapped in the last 12 months. That's a lot of social and sharing. So when we meet our consumers looking for a new kitchen, they likely have pain points as these photos illustrate. They know that they need a better kitchen, but they're not always sure what to ask of us as their trusted advisor. They know they want an updated or a different look overall in color to style than they have today. But they can't always articulate the functional aspects that need improvement. That's an opportunity for us as designers in sharing a kitchen that wins them over. From our research, we find that consumers, when considering <coughs> a new kitchen, think of its color first, then its style. They oftentimes show us photos to articulate the look of the kitchen they're dreaming of, and having it be more open in floor plan and layout continues to be important. Because of this focus, we can easily miss if we only follow their lead of interest with their kitchen's color and style. Totally agree, Sarah. Consumers don't typically lead with the functional pain points to solve. I find they mention the big things to solve, like, hey, I want more counter space. I want the family to sit with me at the island, you know, like the bigger things in the overall layout. What we find in our research is they typically don't think of how they want to operate in their new kitchen design at the front end of the process on their own. This is something that we as designers have to draw out of them over time it's just not top of their mind. Then how a kitchen functions with storage as an aid could be easily forgotten or even given up for fear of the final cost of the kitchen design. This potentially affects how we approach and present the design. In fact, in some cases, we leave their kitchen problems unsolved due to fearing losing the sale with too many add-ons. As I always say, if you don't ask, you don't get. We as designers, have to be the lead on discussing storage with our clients and their design. So our clients don't end up with buyer's regret after the kitchen is installed and paid for. Here's a few examples of things that every homeowner has in their kitchen. Things like silverware, place settings, waste, pots and pans and their lids, to food or spices. All of these basics within everyone's kitchen and more will need a place within your design. We do this as part of our design process and actually pretty quiet. We just take care of it naturally. However, what we are suggesting is that you think and speak about storage needs and solutions <clears throat> that bring improvements to your client's life as soon as you can. For example, during that intake process to improve how they live and improve how they use their kitchen. Add to the benefit of getting a new kitchen. With the goal, you will win a better sale and ideally a purchase with higher satisfaction and also with a higher profit for you and your business. People today want convenience and ease with everything they bring into their lives. Your kitchen designs will register just as important when you can share the great innovations in technology we offer with today's cabinetry. Remember, homeowners typically don't even know what's possible for today's kitchens. Agree. Recently, while visiting a showroom, I observed a homeowner giggle with excitement when opening a display drawer and working the storage aid inside. She was seeing the possibility of her own new kitchen and how it would operate with ease. Most homeowners just don't know what's available. It's our role as their designer to educate them as to what is possible. So please don't wait too far into the process or it, may, or it might be too late. We know and are here to acknowledge the money is always a consideration. 
Even those homeowners who have ample income and are assigning that wonderful large budget have spending limits. Support your client's need to understand the value of their design by sharing early on the functional aspects along with color and style of your design. Determine storage solutions related to them personally supports explaining the importance of your plan to your client. We are fortunate as designers in what we do. We work in an industry and we design and sell a solution where the design is personal to that homeowner. It's not a commodity purchased off a shelf. You're right, Christy. When was the last time you heard a consumer say when buying a large ticket item such as a new car, boy, I wish I would have spent more money. <laughs> a kitchen is a spin that is most understood or after the installation is complete. That kind of puts us at a disadvantage. However, this is also when regret can begin and you're not there at that time. So let's look at research explaining the opportunity in front of us through the data points. What are designers and consumers saying? Here are two key industry research sources we value. RICI, the Research Institute for Cooking and Kitchen Intelligence, is the nation's leading kitchen and bath industry research firm. They are the trusted research source for leading kitchen brands, providing cutting edge research on kitchen trends, primarily focusing on designers. They are the research partner also for Kitchen and Bath Design News. HALS, founded in 2009, is based in Palo Alto, California, has quickly gained respect from both designers and homeowners, and their studies are widely read as the authority of our industry. HALS is consistently producing research from their users, focusing primarily on the consumer and the homeowner. Did you know? Ricky reports that 58% of homeowners regret not investing more on their cabinets, their kitchen design, and how it functions. That's disappointing to know. They would have spent more than we designed to. And that 75% of homeowners want to declutter their countertops. They're really telling us they want their items to have their place, to have less clutter in view within the home as reported especially in the kitchen. So let's look at a deeper view. In the house 2018 study, homeowners identified these top reasons for doing their new kitchen. Notice the top two reporting factors are decluttering their counters and putting things away. Basically to me, those are two of the same and that's a very large percentage. Next is trash management. I certainly hope today that designers are not designing kitchens where the trash can is open and sitting on the floor when we look at this kind of importance. And the next most important is cooking from scratch. To me, this means they spend time in their kitchen, they take pride in what they make for themselves and others. These are some of the homeowners would typically have a kitchen items to store if they love to cook and from scratch. This is amazing. Imagine that 68% of customers regret not including storage and organization solutions. That's a very high percentage. More than half reported having regret after the installation of their kitchen. Basically, customers surveyed regretted not keeping in the storage presented by their designers for their designs. So the survey says that when, you know, when it's all said and done, they regret those cuts in the storage solutions to save them some money. But think about it. I mean, how many times does the average consumer remodel a kitchen in their lifetime? You know, maybe once, twice. Um, they invest all this time and money and the inconvenience of living through a kitchen remodel, if any of you have done that on your own. And then at the end, they wish they'd done it the right way. We'll share with you ways to consider how to approach selling storage within your design and presentations to ensure you don't have homeowners regret afterwards. The 2018 house study also shows us that through the data, both style and storage matter. In talking with our designers nationally, they validate this study by reporting that homeowners today basically want it all when it comes to their kitchen design. That means it's up to us to not just do the design and manage the project, but to also sell the design, its features, 
and its benefits so the client ends up with a completed, well-appointed and functioning kitchen design. Great function and beautiful style can coexist within the same design and budget. When we talk kitchen design, planning with zones makes sense. So we're here today to share with you our take on what's possible with design and products by, plan by kitchen planning zones. Looking at NKBA and our industry standards, NKBA recommends that we design kitchens with the following guidelines shown here. There are recommended total shelf or drawer frontage uh, storage by kitchen size, and it's also broken down by the type, like wall cabinets, base cabinets, etc. Please review NKBA's planning guidelines for additional information. In addition to these storage recommendations, you'll also see details on what you need to include for things like counter space, landing zones. So for today's presentation, let's look at storage from these four zone areas. Hold and store, prep and cleanup, cooking and baking, serving and dining. Hold and store in the areas of the kitchen design <coughs> even nearby that hold our groceries, small appliances to bulk and canned goods. Those items that need to be handy, but also can be placed to the side, still efficient to the other zones. Hold and store also shows us pull it to me storage to compartmentalizing deep drawers with canisters hidden until needed. The bulk storage into categorized shelves. These are just a few ideas to incorporate into your design. Consider sinks as performance areas, how to bend, <coughs> reach, grab, place, remove, such as the waste from preparation when someone's using this kitchen design. Interesting to consider a unique sink drawer with a wood U-shaped drawer arrangement. The storage under the sink is more compartmentalized and pulls out to the user versus having to bend down and reach into the cabinet. Getting the paper towel off the counter and into the cabinet makes sense for decluttering the countertops while also making it easier to access when needed. Also, knives into drawer dividers and trash receptacles in top mount or bottom mount wood dovetail holders improve the cleanup and prep area. Cooking to baking zones deal with fitting appliances into cabinets and storing pots, pans, lids, trays within the area of the kitchen but also allow for tools and spices to cook and bake, best at the point of use for greater efficiency. Cooking and baking areas typically include tray storage shown in the <coughs> cabinet while also working well in tall cabinet areas. To pull out corner storage solutions that return when gently nudged back inside the cabinet on its own, to storage solutions that pull out with greater accessibility on all three sides of the cabinet storage improving visual and reach to items stored inside. Now, I want you to notice I'm identifying the storage item while also explaining the benefit to the item with very little time taken to build value of the item discussed with your homeowners. With kitchens becoming even more related to eating in the kitchen as dining spaces go away and merge within the kitchen, storage of items related to nearby makes sense. Dining and serving can include more purposeful drawers, such as stored items, subdivided or stacked for more quantity of storage within the same drawer depth, or even including storage that stores items while also making a style impression nearby a casual dining area can be an option. To deep drawers that work harder with easy to reposition adjustable dividers. House's 2018 study validates what consumers bought as a preference. Of the built-in specialty storage that were put in upgraded kitchen cabinets, 68% included pull-out waste or recycling, 54% had storage for cookie sheets. Notice that almost half, around 40%, included deeper drawers and a revolving Lazy Susan to pull interior storage better out into the room. Convenience and ease is validated as important to how their kitchens were purchased to function. Please consider these research findings with your own designs. Are you solving with your client's designs with storage solutions and about the same percentage closure rate 
identified nationally. That's always a good way to check. And even more important, do you carry cabinet lines that offer storage solutions homeowners want as shown in this research report? Also in 2018, Ricky's designers reported this prediction for what they would be selling and designing with for 2019 and beyond. An interesting difference here from the consumer study that we just saw is while 41% of consumers upgraded the storage in their cabinets to put in deep drawers, here we see that 78% of designers see deep wide drawers as trending up. So this is a product that's already doing well, but we're only going to see that increase in the future. So what do you think? Do you agree with these predictions of what these designers predict? Check to see what you're selling and see if there's any keys to growing your sales with this trend prediction from our peers. From our experience and in summary, here are the top areas and or storage solutions that are most likely purchased from homeowners. See some favorites? See any storage solutions you could incorporate in your design and selling process? When you look at the summary, they also align to where we started our time together today. Remember, everyone has the same common storage solution needs for dishes, food, waste, cutlery, pots and pans. We encourage you to look back at your designs, take some time, and moving forward, make sure you incorporate these all-star storage solutions with the goal to win more storage in your designs and through your presentations. The first step to getting those great storage solutions into your customer's new kitchen is to simply talk about it with your clients in the very early stages. Christy has a process that she will share with you for interviewing with clients and uncovering their storage needs. Thanks, Sarah. The approach I use during my initial in-home consultation is this. Teach, listen, and advise. First, Teach your customers about storage. What is common sense to you as a designer may not be obvious to someone who's never even remodeled a kitchen before. For example, items that are used most frequently should be stored closest to the user's shoulder height. Think of the cabinets and the shelving closest to shoulder height as the hottest real estate in the kitchen and do not allow infrequently used items to live there. Those types of items, such as like a holiday platter used once or twice a year, can be stored in harder to access spaces, such as a very top shelf in a wall or a tall cabinet, or even in a pantry or the basement. Include ergonomics in your customer consultation and use this when you're comparing storage solutions. For example, one thing that I like to bring up is a standard base cabinet with shelves that requires stooping down and reaching in to get an item versus a base cabinet with rollout trays where you open the doors and then you roll that tray out for an easy viewing. Even better, a deep drawer that can be opened with a single motion rather than two to open a door and then a rollout tray. And then you can instantly view the contents. Ask your customer questions about their storage needs and write everything down. Don't assume that you'll remember it later, you won't. <laughs> later in this presentation, I'll share some of my favorite questions to ask during these interviews. Now, even though I love technology, my personal preference is taking notes on paper rather than typing notes on a phone or a tablet. Why? Well, have you ever tried talking to someone who's typing away on a phone or a laptop? You can't tell if they're texting or Instagramming or taking notes on every single word you say. We, as a society, we're used to talking to the very distracted people, whether it's at work or at home in our personal lives. Taking notes on paper is a visual reminder to your customer that you are really listening to what they're saying. After your consultation, you may also wanna take cell phone photos of your notes or digitize them by some other methods. But during that conversation, that face-to-face -face conversation, put pen to paper. As you're asking questions, listen to where their pain points are. Find the emotional triggers. Do they hate crawling on their hands and knees to try to find something in the back of a blind cabinet? Write it down and solve it in your design. Are they sick and tired of moving that olive oil here in this picture every time they want to get a cookie sheet behind it? Write it down and solve it in your design. Does it bother them to come home and see the kitchen island used as a dumping ground for coats and backpacks? Write it down and solve it in your design. Whenever you can, take photos of these pain points. It doesn't necessarily have to be perfectly captured or professional. Even a quick cell phone shot like I, I have here will do the trick. Be 
sure to ask your client's permission before taking photos. You could say something like, I want to make sure I solve all of your storage needs in your new design. Do you mind if I take a few photos? Trust and respect are not automatically granted to you the moment you walk into a client's home. Your reputation, your reviews, or even referrals may help contribute to your client trusting you, but remember that choosing a designer and remodeling a home is so personal. By taking the time to teach, ask, listen, and document, you are building trust and credibility with your customer. Becoming their trusted advisor means that they're less likely to see cabinets as a commodity that can just be purchased from anyone. These are a few of my favorite questions to ask homeowners. I like to keep them open-ended rather than questions that can be answered by yes or no. What do you hate about your current kitchen? This will give you insight into your customer's why. Be sure that your design does something to address your customer's biggest concern. What do you find yourself running to grab in another room when you're cooking? If your customer frequently needs to travel outside of the kitchen for items they use regularly in meal preparation, maybe you should consider creating storage for those things in the kitchen. What items do you use most and where are they stored? This is similar to the last question, but we're looking at it even closer now. Remember, the highest use item should be closest to your shoulder height, and that might include the bottom shelf or the bottom two shelves of a wall cabinet or the top drawer of a base cabinet. Which items do you use the least and where are they stored? The further away you get from shoulder height, the less those items should be used. Anything that isn't used at least once a week probably shouldn't live in the prime storage areas that we just discussed. Can you tell me about how you use your current kitchen? Listen carefully and think about who uses the kitchen, what they do when they're in the kitchen, where the items are needed for these activities. Do you shop in bulk? Why does it matter if your customer buys one roll of paper towels at a time or 12? Of course, you'll need to incorporate storage for these purchases. I like this photo shown here on the left because this is the reality for many homeowners. If you need storage space for cases of water bottles, pet supplies, cleaning supplies, or maybe even a motorcycle helmet, consider adding storage cabinets with accessories like these rollout trays in a laundry room or a mud room. By asking the right questions, you just might add another room to the scope of your project. And again, remember to take good notes as your customer is answering your questions. You may want to circle phrases in your notes as a reminder to get photos of a particular space. For example, when my customer told me they hated moving that olive oil every time they grabbed a cookie sheet, I made a note to get a photo of that cabinet. Again, that word of caution, just be sensitive when you're taking photos inside a customer's cabinets. I have found that when the camera comes out, they always apologize for the mess and the disorganization. Assure them there's no need to be embarrassed and that what you see is very typical of homes that you always go out and measure. Ask them for permission to take some photos to help your design work and remind them that the new kitchen they have to look forward to will have features that help maximize storage and organization. Christy, you brought along a case study to show us how to use this process, right? That's right, Zara. Tom and Susan have lived with the dark builder grade cabinets that were installed in their craftsman inspired home when it was built 12 years ago. They want to upgrade the style to a lighter, brighter kitchen while also adding hardworking functionality to their primary gathering space, the kitchen. They told me that the layout and the location of the appliances generally works for them pretty well. They rarely use the microwave, so they're open to moving it to some other location. Again, remember that hot real estate space. They also asked me to design storage for everything currently on the countertop to keep their counters clean. After all, like we heard earlier from Sarah, a whopping 75% of consumers want to declutter their countertops. Does this sound pretty typical to jobs you see in your business? During your consultation and measuring appointment, it can be so easy to jump into measuring a kitchen and designing the cabinet layout in your mind. However, I'd like to encourage you to really take some time to investigate the storage needs and listen to the hot button issues for this customer. I promise the time that you spend here will pay off later. Back to our homeowners, Tom and Susan. Here's what I found when I interviewed them and asked them questions. Their glassware was stored in several different places. 
There were some glasses in two different wall cabinets, and then there were others stored in an open section at the end of the island, like you see here. They requested that the new kitchen include space for all of their glassware to be stored together. Next, we looked at their cooking items, spices, oils, vinegars, cookie sheets. As you can see here, some spices were stored on a wall cabinet shelf, and their oils, cooking spray, and vinegars were stored in a base cabinet by the range in front of the cookie sheets and cutting boards. When we looked at that cabinet, the homeowner told me how much he hated moving the oils every time he needed to reach behind and grab a cutting board or a pan. They also asked me for a dedicated spices place. They don't like the overflow of multiple areas. So I made a note of that during my interview. Next, we looked at storage for larger cooking items like pots and pans and skillets. Many of the pots and pans were stored on rollout shelves. While the rollouts do pull everything out and make them visible and easy to reach, the downside of the shallow edges is that they get things like that colander balanced on the top of a pan or pan lids balanced on top, and those can tip and fall over. Everybody's seen a rollout tray that something falls to the back and uh, gets lost. They told me that they love deep pots and pan drawers, so I made a note to include those in my design. They stored their frying pans in a base cabinet vertically, like you see here on the right. You can see quite a bit of wasted space in that cabinet. There's that storage that's lost because the shelf is only half depth, and then also the lost storage on the floor of the cabinet behind those frying pans. As we learned from the research earlier, drawer storage is incredibly important, and our homeowners here have been living with very shallow builder grade drawer storage. I know we've all seen this and many of us might be living with this at home right now. Items like aluminum foil and boxes of sandwich bags just don't fit in shallow drawers and they end up getting stuck or ripped. There are these aftermarket container solutions like you see that they've used here, but those just never use the space as efficiently as a custom fit organizer designed for the size of that drawer. If you are designing with a cabinet line that has a deep top drawer, it has a depth you know will store more than other cabinet lines, then <clears throat> pay attention to that benefit as why you're recommending this cabinet line during your presentation. Kitchen towels are really hard to, hard to store in shallow drawers. I'm sure these homeowners get tired of trying to close that drawer, then rearranging, smushing everything in, just to make it shut. On the right, you can see that they have a wide drawer for cooking utensils, which is nice. But because it's just a really shallow drawer box and no organization with any dividers, all of those utensils just kind of mix together and get stuck whenever you try to open or close that drawer. We've all seen this, right? This is not news to us. The drawer gets stuck on a whisk or a spatula, and then you have to figure out how to move things around so you can actually open the drawer. Then it's another battle when you unload the dishwasher and you put items back in and you try to close that drawer. A simple cutlery divider in this extra wide drawer will be an easy, low cost feature to include to allow your clients to be better organized. We looked at their baking and serving pieces too. These bulkier items were hard to get in and out due to the center styles in the cabinet fa face frames and the shallow shelves in the base cabinets. Anytime they use the muffin tin, it requires bending down and reaching way back to that half depth shelf. So I know these pictures aren't any great surprise or revelation to you. After all, your kitchen designers, you see storage like this every single day. What I'd like to do next is show you how to use this in your design and selling process. When it comes to planning your design, first, find a product line that will fit your customer's storage needs. Look for features that are already built in, like the standard deep drawer boxes, and look for the breadth of their storage offerings. Understand your client's budget and their priorities. What are the nice to have type items and what are the absolute must have features in their kitchen wish list? And solve for the pain points first. As you su suggested before, Christy, by writing it down early on, you can then refer back to what they told you. You're answering what they asked of you through your design as part of your process. All right, everybody ready? Let's take a look at this design. As you can see here, there aren't huge changes to the layout, like tearing down walls or moving appliances. 
Keeping the same general layout allowed us to prioritize and put the budget into features that were really meaningful to them. Cabinet style and finish and great storage functionality. Here's a look at the floor plan. This really stayed similar to the original with some small tweaks. I moved the microwave away from the wall cabinet. It was just taking up that prime real estate in the shoulder height zone. So I moved it to a base cabinet in the island. I also made a big change to the pantry area, tearing out that drywall enclosed closet and putting in built-in pantry cabinets and storage. First, on the sink wall, I recommended using butt door cabinets with no center style for easier access. I also increased the depth on all wall cabinets to 15 inches deep. While this won't make a huge difference in the aesthetics of the design or the usability of the counter space, it adds 25% more storage compared to standard depth cabinets. Be sure when specifying deeper wall cabinets that you have the proper support for them when you're installing. One of Susan's requests was to have somewhere in the kitchen place to store the step stool for reaching up into those tall wall cabinets instead of walking to the laundry room to grab the step stool like they do currently. We incorporated a six inch base step stool cabinet, which has the benefit of keeping the stool right at your fingertips. If you're like me, and I know you can't see me, but I am 5'3", all of these nine foot and 10 foot ceilings in homes these days can mean that step stools are an absolute necessity. Next, we took a look at some of the things stored in the drawers. Drawer organization is probably one of my favorite areas. You can see here in their current drawers, there are utensils, chip clips, measuring cups, things like that. For storage where you have some longer items and some shorter items, I just love the utensil drawer organizer angled because it has storage space for all different sizes of items. Small things can go in those little corners and then longer utensils fit in that large middle section. So it's just a great versatile storage piece. One category of items that every consumer has is some sort of food storage containers. My favorite way to store that is in a deep drawer where they're all contained and they can't fall off a shallow rollout tray or get lost in a deep fixed shelf. For the Marie Kondo types, and I know you're out there, some of you have messaged us already and, and uh, told us about your love for Marie Kondo. Well, there is this wonderful food storage organizer drawer with spaces that are just the right size to hold containers and their lids like you see here. Water bottles and travel mugs are bulky and awkward when you're trying to find space to store them. You can see here they currently live on the floor of a cabinet with a half depth shelf. For items like this, they can tip over easily and they, and they need some height. I really love using a deep drawer with an adjustable drawer divider like you see here in that bottom photo. This allows you to put the divider where you really need it and customize your own sections. When you corral all those bottles into a row with that drawer divider, it keeps them from that domino effect where one plastic bottle tips over and then all the rest of them follow. Sink base innovations have come a long way. Instead of the cabinet with a center style like you see in their current kitchen, I proposed a cabinet with no center style, making plumbing installation and fixes as well as everyday access so much easier. I also added in some great compact storage items like the stainless tilt down sink front to hold small items and keep clutter off the counter. And then I also added storage organizers for each of the sink based doors to hold cleaning supplies and grocery bags. While Tom and Susan currently have a roll out trash and recycling bin, which is nice, an opportunity that I saw to improve that space is to add an auto open trash and recycle. You just bump it with your knee and then it opens right up to you. Today, there are both electrical and mechanical methods of touch to open storage. I love this feature for a number of reasons. First, it's convenient. When you've got your hands full, it just takes a bump from your knee to open up that cabinet. Second, this is a nice education point for your customer. When I go into homes with cabinets that are maybe 10, 15 years old, if there are any cabinets that have finished damage or chips, it's usually the sink base and then the trash cabinet. I have a few theories on why. First, the height of the trash cabinet door and the weight that it holds means it's a bit harder to open than just your everyday drawer. That extra effort required means that sometimes fingernails or even jewelry will scratch that surface when you're opening a trash. Second, the trash cabinet gets a lot of use. Think about how many times during the course of the day you're in and out of that cabinet. Third, when you use that cabinet, 
your hands are often wet or messy with that trash that you're throwing away. And lastly, and probably most importantly, trash is icky. So what do we do? We get our most powerful cleaners and chemicals to disinfect that space, right? Of course, that can be damaging to finish. This is why I recommend using a cabinet line with a strong proven finish and also a cabinet line that includes push to open features on trash cabinets. Above the trash, I proposed a knife section cutting center to keep the knives all safely secured and lined up with the added bonus of extra space on top to chop and prep food. Those drawers from Tom and Susan's current kitchen are getting a nice upgrade to deep standard drawers and adding dividers inside. This keeps everything lined up and in its place so you don't have to worry about that drawer getting stuck or refusing to close. The towels that currently live in the shallow top drawer always get stuck and they now live in that deep bottom drawer of a four drawer base cabinet. So much easier on those taller drawers. Glassware has become consolidated to live all together in a single cabinet. And with that 15 inch depth wall cabinet, there's plenty of room for everything. Bakeware is also stored more efficiently and easier to reach in those 15 inch deep wall cabinets without the center style. Having multiple shelves in a wall cabinet instead of the single half depth shelf that you see here in the existing base cabinet means that the homeowners will have less stacking and unstacking to do every time they reach for their favorite baking pan. Silverware storage gets an upgrade as well. Although this is one area that most homeowners have at least something, even a generic plastic insert that's out there on the market. Um, there are much more advanced and customized solutions today. The double tier cutlery tray doubles the flatware storage. I like to recommend putting your everyday forks, knives, and spoons on top, and then storing serving pieces or a secondary set of flatware on the bottom tier. Those cookie sheets hidden back there behind that oil in that current kitchen, one of Tom's big pain points. My proposed solution is to add tray dividers to a base cabinet to keep those tidy and also easy to remove from the cabinet. Remember that utensil drawer that we saw earlier? Think about how much easier it would be to find what you're looking for and also how much easier it would be to open and close that drawer when the new, with a new standard deep top drawer and utensil dividers. Pots and pans get an upgrade too with a pegged drawer organizer. No more balancing lids that fall back behind when you open that rollout tray. Everything's contained by that nice, nice deep drawer box and it's held in place by those customizable pegs. The cabinet above the refrigerator is currently 24 inches deep, which can hold quite a bit, but it's hard to access with that center style. I've removed that and included tray dividers. Now remember our shoulder height rule. This is not where you wanna store your everyday cutting board or your most used cookie sheet, unless you wanna use that stuff tool a lot. But this is a perfect place for those large holiday platters and the serving pieces that are bulky and awkward. In the island, I combine the oils, vinegars, and spices and put them in a base pantry pullout for quick and easy access of the range. And lastly, that pantry. <laughs> we are going to make that pantry space work so much harder. And they told me that when they moved into this house, they bought these shelves at Costco as a temporary measure, and here they are 12 years later still using that space exactly the same way. So what I did is I proposed removing the drywall enclosure and, build, and putting in built-in cabinets in its place. The tall upper section will have rollout trays below the eye level and then shelves above eye level for easy pullout access to canned goods and food items. Below that, we have drawers with dividers and the deep drawer organizer look at how useful those sections are for things like snacks. Now, remember earlier in the, when we saw the research that homeowners care about storage and style? I wanted this pantry not only to be a space that would hold all of the family's food items and be utilitarian, but also look nice while doing it. Breaking up a pantry with an open top section for artwork and decor and breaking the bottom section into drawers helps make this feel more like a customized armoire instead of just a utility cabinet. 
I can't wait to see the final results when this kitchen remodel is completed in the coming months. Now, Christy, I'm going to speak on behalf of all those designers out there right now, and I'm sure they're all thinking the same thing. I'm so busy. Who has time to put this presentation like this together? <laughs> yes, I have definitely heard that before, Sarah. So what I would argue is this. How much time do you spend to fully close a kitchen project? That means you have to start with the time to market your business and generate a new lead, complete your initial consultation or your measure appointment, design your layout, now whether that's by hand or 2020, you're still spending some time to create that layout, pricing out the cabinets and the rest of the products for the house, then calling your customer, making another appointment to come in for a design review, getting my drift here. <laughs> and then likely ending up with some minor changes before the project's ready to close. When you create that emotional connection to the design because you've shown your customer these beautiful visuals about how you'll solve their biggest pain points in their organization problems, you're not selling a commodity anymore. You will see your closing ratio increase and don't we all want to close more projects? Also, you really wanna think about how it feels to your customer. When I put designs like the one you just saw, there, these are some of the responses that I have heard from customers. I never thought of that. What a complete design, you've included everything. This is far more than we thought we would get. So I'll give it to you, it does take some time to think about storage and present a carefully considered design with before and after pictures of storage needs, but when you have your customers saying things like this, don't you think it might make them more likely to recommend you to their friends and neighbors? So I get it. I've never heard a designer tell me that they just have too much time on their hands and they need more to do before they present to their customers. Am I right? So here are some ways that you can save time, but still create an amazing presentation full of visuals with storage solutions. Keep a template with your storage all-stars. That slide that we saw earlier is just an example of this. You could also keep a folder with all these images on your computer. Then you just copy and paste from your template into your design presentation. So much easier than going out and gathering those photos each time, right? And then your, your customer still feels like it's personal for them. Also, use your cabinet manufacturer's website. These are often great places to find photos of storage solutions. And use that storage interview process that we reviewed and start your design with storage rather than trying to add it in after your design is completed. Remember that your showroom is the most powerful selling tool. You should include storage in your showroom displays and don't forget to give your customers a full tour of the showroom and pull out all the accessories that they might not have found on their own. Let customers try it out and see how it functions. And merchandise your displays to help make it real. By that, what I mean is go shopping for some canned goods, load up your pantry cabinets, put some cookie sheets and cutting boards in the tray dividers, really help them understand how the function would work in their own home. As we heard in the research earlier, storage often gets cut when it comes down to making the budget work. Here are some of our favorite tips on overcoming price objections. Share research, budget holistically, do it better best and prioritize the budget. So we'll look at each of these in depth. First, share research on customer regret. They may want to gather a research folder and make copies so that you can share that with your prospective clients. We looked at some really great research earlier in this presentation. 68% of customers regret not including storage and organizational solutions. 58% of homeowners regret not investing more money on their cabinetry. 75% of homeowners want to declutter their countertops. So what else? What do you see as important research that would help your homeowners? Remodeling Magazine puts out a cost versus value report. We definitely recommend following Ricky, Howes, and other respected sources in our industry. Look at the cabinet budget holistically. And by that, I mean, put the cabinets and the storage together as a complete package. Don't look at each individual cabinet and add on. 
It's so easy for a consumer to get sticker shock when they see that the trash cabinet they love could cost a couple of hundred dollars instead of that $20 bin that sits on their floor in their kitchen. Give your customer good, better, best options for things like rollout trash bins. Maybe you even have a good, better, best package of storage solutions that you put together using your most commonly used storage solutions. Try to think about these packages a little differently. Take, for example, the automotive industry. When you choose a luxury trim package on a car, you're often getting a grouping of luxury features like leather seats, heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel, luxury aesthetics, etc. Rather than eliminate the storage item, just move up and down in that good, better, best price spectrum to help fit your customer's needs. Understand what is important to your customer and what falls lower on the list. Look at trading down to a lower cost door style or wood species if storage is higher on the priority list. Many times you can get a similar look just by keeping the finish and simplifying the door style. So you've considered storage in your initial design consultation. You've taken photos and you've come up with a stellar design that solves your customer's pain points. You've made your case to overcoming price objections through the tips that we reviewed, and now it's time to close that sale. This is a critical time because this right here is often where the big sacrifices and the trade-offs happen, and we know that leads to consumer regret. So here are some of our favorite tips to help you close your sale. Revisit pain points, remind your customer, show solutions to problems, and use photos and visuals. Let's talk about those a little bit more. Remind your customer, go back to your notes from the customer interview and look at what were their biggest pain points, revisit those. Have you solved all of those? Remind your customer what their current kitchen actually looks like. Remind them what they hate about it. Include these in your design presentation where possible. Show your customer how the new kitchen design solves their pain points and problems. And lastly, use the photos that you took of their existing cabinet storage to make the case for a wonderful new feature that you've included in their design. Don't forget to include those proposed features to help them visualize. When you complete a project, it's so easy to move on to the next customer and their project. However, it's important to document your success and use it in developing strong referrals. We recommend, recommend hiring a professional real estate photographer to take photos of your completed projects for use on your website, in your social media, um, on House, Instagram, LinkedIn, and so on. Unfortunately, many times we see completed project photos that only include the beautiful exterior of the cabinets and the design and we overlook the hardworking function on the insides. Make a list of accessories and unique storage solutions used in your design, and then make sure you get professional photos of these and share them in your portfolio. Odds are there's someone out there considering a kitchen remodel, browsing your photos, who has never encountered such thoughtful storage consideration. Be sure to have your homeowners sign a photo release that allows you to use these items both digitally and in print to promote your business. I hope that this process and the project that I shared with you today will help give you some new ideas and more confidence to win storage in your kitchen designs and your presentations. Thanks for taking us through the whole process, Christy, from the initial design consultation and interview tips, all the way through documenting the final results with your design case, store, case study. Ideally, our audience today has gained new information for incorporating more storage in the front end of your process and into your designs and presentations to win more storage with each and every design to ensure no to low homeowner regret after your project is installed. And as a side bonus, this also increases your word of mouth referrals for many more kitchen sales. So let's hear from you. Have you used a similar process to sell storage and organization? Was there anything that Sarah and I missed today? We would love to hear feedback from you. You can reach us at the email addresses shown on the screen. You can also um, enter a question into the Q&A box. And thanks to everyone for joining us for this learning session sponsored by Gerbert. 
And thanks to our industry, the National Kitchen and Bath Association, for considering and coordinating this opportunity to speak with you today. Happy selling and winning more storage through design and best presentation practices with your clients. Again, you've been watching our Winning Cabinetry Storage Through Best Practices webinar. If you're attending live, don't forget to register your CEU. A recorded version of this webinar will be made, will be made available on the NKBA website. Thank you. Uh, Debbie, are there any questions that we'd like to get answered? Hi, ladies, that was great. Um, yeah, there's a couple, let me read one back here. Um, as far as the overhead refer lift up door, is there an easier way to get that door to close once it's open since it's up so high? Sure, um, some of the products that are out there these days include um, push to close as well. I've seen that on the lift up um, cabinet options. So that might be something to recommend when you have really tall ceilings and cabinets that um, flip up. You know, Christy, also the mechanism that can be added to the waste storage cabinet can also be added to cabinetry, such as that cabinet, even high up. And you could have a remote to have an auto open feature in wall cabinetry, not just the waste receptacle cabinet. Great point, Sarah. Okay, ladies, here's another one. The toe kick earlier on uh, had a pull out drawer. What was in it? So some of the things that I like to store in toe kick drawers, um, again, thinking about ergonomics and the shoulder height, when you look at toe kicks, that's pretty far away from your shoulder height. I would treat that space not with your everyday use items, but that can be a really nice hiding place for things that are used a little bit less frequently. And many of those are touched to open as well. And that kind of a drawer solution, um, I find that the designers like to even add them to vanity cabinets, like the powder room where you really don't have a lot of drawers. They can at least get a drawer that's tucked away and hidden, but then available to people who live in the home. Okay, here's another one. What do clients think when you ask to take pictures of their storage? Are they open to that? So without a doubt, like everybody thinks, oh my gosh, I'm the only one on the face of this earth that has such messy drawers. Why can't I get it together? Everybody feels like that. And so I just try to establish rapport and say, you know, these cabinets are exactly what I see every single day. These storage problems are things that every single homeowner that I work with has faced before. I try to get them to feel like there is nothing wrong with them. There's nothing abnormal. They are not these you know, hideous, disorganized people just because their drawers are a mess, just like everybody else out there. So um, I just try to make them feel like um, you've seen it all before. Um, and their, their, their kitchen after this process is going to be something they'll want to show off. They'll want to have that in pictures. Um, just keep reminding them of the end view. Okay, and then someone's getting back to the toe kick drawer. Uh, does that need to be higher than four inches? Um, you know, that would probably depend on the manufacturer and the toe height. I know that um, some European style cabinetry has different height toe kicks. I would really work closely with your cabinet manufacturer on the height of that drawer and the um, requirements of it. And then think about the flooring material, like you wouldn't want an uneven floor or heavy tile that's very chunky that could possibly affect operation as well. I, I know the one that we showed definitely works in cabinetry that we know about and it works great. It's just the install, installer and the tile and those kind of things should be considered as well. Great point. Okay, so here's uh, another one. Do you have any tips or tricks or products for storing technology items? Oh, love that question. Um, it's so interesting to me in the past few years how our kitchens have just become this hub of technology. And, you know, whenever I have family over, like, it's a race for the iPhone charger that's located in the kitchen. Everybody's got their devices. So um, one of the things that I love that we offer, and I, I know that um, there are a lot of solutions out there, is a charging drawer. 
So that's a, a, a drawer that has an outlet in the back of the drawer. So you open this up, you don't have to worry about cords out on the countertop and, and phones and iPads cluttering up your countertop. It's a drawer that has the electric supply housed right inside it. And then it has space for storing your electronics. That's one of my personal favorites. Uh, Sarah, do you have any others? I do. We have a shelf that is finished to match the cabinetry. You know, floating shelves are so popular with less wall cabinets. And then an iPad or phone can be off the counter positioned there when you want to use it as kind of a visual stand. That's another great idea. Okay, someone had a comment here about the fact that they saw a Coming back to the toe kick door, that they saw a, co a toe kick being used for dog water and food bowls, and also for a small step stool for kids. So that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of ways to use that toe kick space. Isn't it funny that, um, you know, I almost feel like Pinterest has um, changed that space for consumers. I, I've seen storage under the stairs, I've seen storage in toe kicks. And because we've never thought about using these spaces before, all of a sudden, all these ideas are just like coming out of the woodwork, um, woodwork, literally. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it's using those spaces that everybody has and we just kind of walk by every day, using them in more creative solutions that allow you to make the most of the space that you have. OK, and here was a comment from somebody when we were talking about taking the pictures of the unorganized kittens. Um, this person says that they reassure their clients that this is why I'm here today to help you solve the same problems everyone else has. <laughs> yes, <laughs> isn't that true? That is so true. Yes. And then here's one about uh, what about offering an induction charger uh, drawers as for cell phones? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading this wrong. Or what about offering an induction charger drawer as cell phones are becoming more wireless uh, charging? Is that a possibility? Uh, that's yeah, that's an interesting concept. I know that I've seen um, wireless charging in countertop materials, and there's several different brands out there um, offering solutions that will do that. But it's an interesting idea to um, look at the drawer storage space as uh, an area for that as well. I don't currently know of any solutions that have wireless charging in a drawer, but that is an interesting idea. Yeah. Maybe we should talk to our product development team on that. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a comment about toe kicks. The storage can really be tricky with some cabinet manufacturers. That was a comment. Um, let's see here. Uh, would you use drawer dividers in a deeper drawer for charging stations for iPads and other smart devices? Um, yeah, that's an interesting idea. I just love those adjustable drawer dividers because, you know, um, what I've seen from homeowners is they might think they're going to use the kitchen in one way, and then all of a sudden that drawer becomes kind of a space where they stick the iPad and the, all the different phones and different devices. And so having versatile storage is kind of nice. And when you can pick up and move that drawer divider and make it adjustable, you know, maybe you thought it was going to house, you know, kitchen towels. And then all of a sudden with all the devices you've built up in your family, uh, hey, we need to put these closer together and store our um, technology devices vertically. I think that's totally possible um, and kind of a nice way to have those things uh, easy to access right at your fingertips, but not cluttering up the countertops. Okay. And then there's another one here. Uh, deep drawers for pots and pans are great, but what about pots and pans lid storage? Lid storage, yes. <laughs> Don't balance those on the top with a rollout tray. It almost feels like it's just a leaning tower ready to just topple at any moment. Um, lids are, in, in my opinion, something that I've done in the past is use drawer dividers to create a really narrow section and then store the lids vertically on the side or on the front of that drawer and then have your pots and pans in a big open section behind that. So if you had adjustable drawer dividers, you could section off just a narrow area and keep those lids vertically. Um, that's one of my favorite methods. Anybody else have a favorite method for those lids? Uh, Sarah, like have you seen one. anything cool? Yeah. yeah. I like a roll tray that's deep at the bottom and has a tall back and then shelves to pop those lids. It's almost like a stadium seat. Yes, and yes. You can see all the pots and pans. The lids are separated. You can grab them easily and they roll out to you. That's one of my favorites. 
Oh, that's a good one. And that reminds me, um, there are also really, really deep drawers, like a two drawer base where you pull out the drawer and that could hold your pots and pans, but then hidden and concealed right above that is a rollout tray. And those are typically shallower and that's where you can store the lids. So those two are kept right uh, close together, but um, easier to access, keep them organized. Okay. I've got two more here and then we should, we should move on, but uh, thank you. Uh, can the cabinet for storing oil next to the oven be insulated to the heat that's coming from the oven? Okay, so some some concerns. Yeah, as as appliances have become more, you know, prosumer, and by that, like with the higher BTUs and the the more heat that they're giving off, um, it's definitely good to ask questions like that. Um, think about ways that you can protect the cabinet. Of course, you want to work with. Um, a finish that holds up to heat. That's a, a good first recommendation. And then the second idea is um, many manufacturers will offer heat shields. And, you know, back in the days where we used to sell a lot of thermofoil, that was typically used, a heat shield was typically used um, in areas like, you know, by the range or by a dishwasher or even, you know, near like a, a place where you'd have a toaster. And all of that was to protect the thermofoil cabinet doors from the heat that were being given off by those appliances. So I think you could probably um, use some similar uh, similar strategies to help uh, protect the oils by the range. Okay, and then one last question. Um, when we were talking about the trash pullout before, um, if the client wants the garbage to be covered in the cabinet to mask the smell, how do I ensure uh, that if their hands are full, they can still access that easily? I'm sorry. I I'm not sure I'm following correctly. Sarah, did you follow the? No, I did not. Did okay. you <laughs> Can you say one more? <laughs> Surely. Uh, so we, we had trash pullout drawer that you were yeah. talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. And I think the thought is here. So if someone's hands are full, um, yeah. how, do they, how are they able to, you know, get that drawer open without making a big mess, essentially? <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, the cabinet that I proposed in the design is actually pushed to open, so you don't need your hands. <laughs> so what you do is you just bump your knee against that trash cabinet, and the whole trash section, like the trash and the recycling behind it, it just pushes out to you. Now, there are two different ways of doing this. You can do it by electrical means, and there are manufacturers that have um, electrical products that push out that trash and recycling. Um, the pro there is that like it pushes out far and, and, and nicely, the con is you do have to think about electrical when you're putting in trash, and that's not something that we're used to. So you'd have an electrician create a, um, you know, the electric source back there behind the cabinet. Um, another newer product that's come onto the market in the last couple of years is a mechanical version of the same type of thing. And by mechanical, I mean that um, the, the function is almost like spring-loaded. Spring-loaded is probably the very wrong term for it. I am not on the engineering side of things, but essentially it is a mechanical, not an electrical means of that drawer getting pushed open to you when you bump it. So whatever uh, method you choose, whether it's electrical or mechanical, you're just bumping that with your knee, not with your dirty hands that are you know, full of trash or goop or whatever icky things. Okay, and then to add on to that question, so, um, this person is saying, do they have a, an easy trash lid available or motion lids? Because I think she was thinking that the trash oh. was covered within, okay. within the cabinetry. I just saw that pop yeah. in. So okay, one option, yeah. One option is to not necessarily have to be so cumbersome with the lid. Uh, by having the manufacturer add a floor between the drawer and the open receptacle, it does kind of give some closure. Um, but that's kind of the best I've seen most designers choose is to block that separation more in the cabinet design. Yeah, exactly. Um, that was going to be the same direction that I was going to recommend, Sarah, is having that false floor or that divider put in between the trash section and the drawer section above it. Um, you know, I think that, you know, perhaps in the future, there could be solutions where you wave over a lid, but, you know, the more complicated and the more electronics and mechanicals you add to that trash cabinet, um, sometimes the sometimes it gets a little too complex. Um, and after all, that's a space where you have you know, a lot of trash and 
kind of cleaning it pretty thoroughly. So I really like that solution of just dividing it with um, uh, a, a fixed, almost a fixed like uh, shelf in that cabinet. Okay, and then there's a final question here about a junk drawer. No one talked about the junk drawers today. So um, doesn't every kitchen have one? And do you ever plan for one? <laughs> <laughs> Well, in the in the existing kitchen, it's almost like every every drawer was the junk drawer. You know, we've got all those little wire dividers, and like I know these are just things that you know, like oh, I'll pick something up at you know Bed Bath and Beyond and just stick it in my drawer to help me get organized. Um, but I think that that leads to all these different types of functions of items being stored in random drawers. We looked at that. Um, one of the current pictures that I showed had. Uh, some knives and some chip clips and <laughs> all these different utensils all kind of just stuck together in a junk drawer type space. Um, for those types of things, I really like the utensil dividers. And then I also really, really love that angled utensil divider, um, which is perfect for a junk drawer type storage. Again, you want to take note of what's actually included in that junk drawer. If, it's, if they're taller items, you want to use that full vertical space. If they're smaller items like, you know, pens or paper clips or more like um, office-y type things, those might be nice in a tiered cutlery storage. Just because it has cutlery in the name does not mean you have to store knives and forks there. You can store um, your junk neatly organized. <laughs> Good. Yep. So I know some people like to put hammers, screws, twine, flashlights, things like that, batteries in a in a drawer too. I know I have, my kitchen has one like that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Go ahead. The, the angled insert that Christy is mentioning gives you that extra link. You know, like that big um, flashlight that's so tall, it doesn't fit in the cabinet anywhere, but you could pop it into a drawer with a little bit more generous storage with an angle. Yes, yes. And, and one thing to think about is put those types of items in your showrooms. Right. Like everybody's going to relate to, oh, my goodness, I have that thing and I always struggle fitting it in my drawer. But my goodness, you've shown me an amazing solution here in the showroom. I need this product in my life. <laughs> That's a great idea. Well, ladies, I think we've we've come to, to um, the end of the questions for the most part. And we are over time. And I want to thank both of you, Sarah uh, Reap and Christy Hudson, for your time today. They want to thank uh, Gebert for their generous sponsorship and all of you in the audience for being with us today and staying with us over this period of time. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you.